welcome to another episode of Geoshifters Space News. Did you know that hibernation in space could be more than sci-fi only? The state of hibernation is close to what is called torpor, that is the state in which living organisms reduce their body temperature and metabolism. Hibernation has been studied in ground-based experiments by ESA's Science and Exploration Research Program, and the results are promising. With the current technologies, it will take astronauts about nine months to reach Mars. They will then spend about three, four months on the Martian surface, and it will take them another nine months to return back to Earth. Oh, 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 stop. That sounds cool. So you mean you can put people to sleep for nine months? Okay, teach me more, Isa, but uh, first tell me who made this video? I mean, this part right here? It's lovely to get some new footage showing the Earth from space, but this looks very weird. I mean, why is there a blue light to the right? The sun is yellow, right? And where is all the land? It looks like all of the land is in the darkness and everything else is water. Oh, uh, you mean this is not real? You faked it again in 3D software? Ah, you should hire me, Isa. This looks like crap. I can make much more realistic globes in space. Uh, anyway, please teach me more of your important space research. Each crew member will need about 30 kilograms of food, water, air and other essential consumables per day. On top of that, there will be health challenges. The astronauts will be exposed to microgravity for long periods of time. They will have to rely on their spacecraft and on their crew members. So there will be a mental challenge. And above all, they will be exposed to cosmic radiation, which has long-term effects on their health. Well, I think we should be fine by now living in zero gravity. We have been doing it for over 50 years now. You tell us that cosmic radiation has long-term effects on the health of astronauts, but there are astronauts that lived on the ISS for over a year and they all seem to be fine. I tried to find an example of an astronaut who lived in space and suffers consequences from it, but I can't find anything. I mean, they are either dead and killed in some horrible accident, which seems to be very rare, or they are totally fine. Don't you think it's strange that there are not more accidents? Spacewalks seem to be a common thing now, they do it all the time. And space is supposed to be so dangerous, with temperatures going all over the place and the constant pressure of a perfect vacuum. If you watch movies, you see all kinds of accidents where astronauts get sucked into space or their helmet breaks and their head grows and blows up. So far, no real examples from uh, such things, right? <laughs> uh, yes, sometimes astronauts almost drown in space if they don't put a diaper in their helmet, but we did not hear any more of those accidents lately. Everything seems to be totally safe now. Oh, and uh, something else. You told us that one astronaut needs 30 kilograms of supplies each day. So if I do a little calculation, there are seven astronauts on the ISS. So 7 times 30, that makes uh, 210 kilograms of supplies in one day. Times 30, that makes 6 tons of supplies each month. That's a lot of supplies. Uh, maybe we should hibernate some of the ISS crew? Why not? They are being useless there anyway. Please, uh, to all my viewers, tell me in the comments what kind of important, useful things we got thanks to all the space research we did in the ISS. Every video we get they are playing with water or are explaining how they pee into the toilet and how coffee comes out on the other side. Uh, I mean, that fixes some of the supply issues, right? Uh, if they want to go to Mars, just make them drink coffee for 9 months. Uh, I made a video 6 or 7 years ago about this Wikipedia page that shows all the scientific research that have been done on the International Space Station. It was a video showing you that like almost all of the links you can find on this page are not working and I went back to the page to check it again and it's still pretty much the same. 
I mean the blue ones have some articles, all the red links, they are all empty pages, nothing on them, there are like, almost all of them are red, you can go to all the pages, check all the links, <laughs> you will not find anything. So where is all the research that have been done? I mean if you go to the bottom of the page you have some more, but even those, if you click them, most of them are empty pages or this 404 <laughs> it's still the same uh, I bet NASA and ESA doesn't watch my videos because they should have uh, fixed this page uh, anyway let's continue with the video now how about we avoid all those cargo and health issues and challenges by putting astronauts to sleep during their space journey how about we send hibernating astronauts into space what a good idea, let's launch sleeping astronauts into space. Who is going to steer the rocket? Uh, computers probably. So is the computer going to fix itself if anything goes wrong? Or uh, are they going to use tasers to quickly wake up the astronauts when anything goes wrong? Uh, I get it right, it takes a lot of supplies for a two year mission. Why are we even still thinking about going to Mars? What's so special about Mars? Are you thinking about selling trips to space as a holiday for people? Uh, with 18 months of travel time and 4 months of holiday, I don't think many people will be interested. Do you remember the Mars One company who was going to send people to Mars on a one-way trip? They went bankrupt before they could launch or even build a rocket. Or is there some important research you can only do on Mars? Uh, why don't we start by putting a base on the moon? Uh, or, uh, right, we will do that, <laughs> I know. Uh, three days of travel time and a nice view to the Earth, that sounds much better. In the meantime you can build a useful robot to send to Mars, one that can build some stuff instead of destroying stuff. I mean a robot that drills tiny holes and makes selfies is pretty useless. Well, maybe removing the selfie stick from the photo was pretty cool, but uh, you did not give us that technology yet for our phones. Invisible to the eye, but present in vast amounts in space, is radiation. Exposure to radiation may lead to cancer, cataracts or damage to the central nervous system. But hibernation may be the key to keeping astronauts safer by mitigating the radiation risk on long space journeys. ESA has been funding a group of scientists studying the effects of torpor induced in non-hibernating animals. Hibernation or torpor as radiation protection tools is important as radiation are all around us. Every day we are exposed to a variety of radiation on Earth, though there is no reason to be scared. The vast majority of it is naturally occurring and not harmful. The radiation protective effect of torpor on hibernator has been studied in experiments since in the 60s. Since the 2000s, hibernation has been artificially induced in non-hibernator such as rats. We had previously experienced centrally drug-induced hibernation in rats and show radiation protective effect on the organ such as the liver and the testicle of the rats after photon radiation during hibernations. Currently, in collaboration with Japan, we found that synthetic hibernation or torpor on rats also has protective effect following heavy iron radiations. Our current study showed a significant increase in survival and show radiation protection in some organs, which might be helpful for future space missions. So if I understand correctly, you can recreate that radiation here on Earth. I suppose they did not shoot the rats into space to test this. So why don't we try to create better shielding to fix this issue? We went through the Van Allen radiation belts 50 years ago with some gold foil and duct tape. Have you tried using two layers of tin foil with two layers of gold foil on top? That gold foil seemed to be pretty good at stopping radiation. <sighs> what are we doing? This is very sad man. We are putting rats to sleep, radiating them to see how much they can take before they die with the purpose of sending people to an empty sandball without oxygen or food or anything. There is nothing there. It's our tax money that is paying for this. Look at all the fancy expensive stuff there and that woman probably cost a lot too. 
Yeah, sure, she looks happy and loves her job. It's nice to get paid for killing rats while everyone thinks you are doing important research. Can't we do something more useful with this money? I'm tired of all this research that never brings us anything. Isa, if you are watching this, I can help you. This is not what people want to see. I have a proposal you can't deny. Uh, just give me 1% of your budget. I will fix the Wikipedia page and bring you some cool research people will love. We need to come up with some useful things so people can see you are doing useful research. People got very tired of Velcro. We have been using it all our lives, it's nothing special anymore. Even most of our shoes don't have Velcro anymore. We went back to using shoelaces and zippers. And the memory foam? No one wants it anymore. Just 1% of your budget. I will make you some inventions everyone will love. I just don't have the budget to do it right now. And I will not steal it from someone else like you did when you claimed you invented Velcro. You should hire some of us uh, flat earthers. We have great ideas. Uh, for example, from the Q&Fees YouTube channel. He invented a space coffee helmet just a few days ago. It's a smart guy and a great YouTube channel. Uh, 2% of your budget and we can work together. I have a way better invention than CGI coffee. I call it Coffee Helmet 2000. Here it is. Oh, look at the design. Instant coffee. And you don't even have to put in money. And you can smell it instantly. <laughs> you see, these are the kind of inventions we want. Something we can actually use. Make some of these helmets, I bet you can sell them for a lot of money. And kids will love it and it will teach them to drink coffee. Uh, well, I think this is enough bullshit for one video. I'm going to end it right here. Thank you all for watching and I hope to bring you some better news in the next episode of Geoshifter Space News.